journalist with a reputation and a paycheck to protect do not speak the truth. What is happening? Something is going on. Can you feel the way? I'm Fisk Smith, and welcome to Spiral Into It. Back in the spring of 2000, we reported on the mysterious story of chemtrails. Back then, millions of Americans and people around the world were reporting unusual sightings of unmarked airplanes ejecting strange contrails. Normal contrails are streaks of condensed water vapor that dissipate after a few minutes. But these chemtrail reports with documented pictures and websites were of a very different nature. In a typical case, an airplane or airplanes would appear. They would be unmarked, usually a military-type tanker plane. They would launch chemicals that would disperse and not disappear after a few minutes. On the contrary, these dispersed chemicals would usually plume and fan out to cover the sky. It is now 2002 and Will Thomas has been following this story since its inception. He has been covering this story from the beginning. Will Thomas has sacrificed everything to cover this story. He has relinquished the love of his life, he has been ridiculed by his peers, and he has been harassed at every point. But you know what? I still see chemtrails today. Check it out. Look up in the sky. The next time you see a contrail, Wait and see if it disperses after 20 minutes. If it doesn't, it's most likely a chemtrail. You see them all the time. So listen to what our guest has to say. This event was recorded at ConspiracyCon in Santa Clara in 2001, an event put on by Brian Hall. What is happening? Something is going on. Can you feel the way? Journalists with a reputation and a paycheck to protect, do not speak the truth. So you know where I'm at. <coughs> yes, there's a standard response to this kind of information from the established media, the corporate media. And the first is to deny what's obvious. Even when there is proof, the denials continue, the distractions continue, and then we move into the realm of ridicule. And of course, if that doesn't work, you eliminate the threat. But in this culture, ridicule usually does the job. Someone is stealing our skies. You know it's not passenger planes making these patterns. For these close crossing aerial formations often take place far from charted airways or navigational beacons and break all the rules regarding the permitted proximity of commercial aircraft. Watch carefully. And you can see artificial overcast being made by three and four engine jet tankers, usually all white or sometimes silver in color. Even individual commercial planes, such as this MD-80 airliner, have been observed with unusually thick trails coming from their tail or wing-mounted engines. A recommendation by the father of the H-bomb a feasibility study by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and a patent held by Hughes Aerospace call for spraying clouds of aluminum oxide and other highly reflective metallic particles into the greenhouse gas layer between 24,000 and 42,000 feet. 
the intent is to reflect enough income in sunlight to slow runaway global warming. When Edward Teller addressed an international seminar on planetary emergencies in 1998, the Earth's lowest temperatures had just been found to be heating up more than 2 degrees Fahrenheit per century. As Teller called for a planetary sunscreen, the strongest El Nino ever recorded saw swordfish beaching in Scotland. Tropical marlin and mahi-mahi were being caught off the coast of Washington State, and the first Category 6 hurricane ever recorded had sustained winds of 200 miles per hour. Similar superstorms, droughts, and floods killed 50,000 people that year and cost insurance companies a record $92 billion, three times the annual dollar cost of the Vietnam War.